Okay, so here we have a question asking, what is one-third of three to the sixth? Well, let's say you take a number like three, and you want to triple it. What do you do? Well, you go three times three, right? You start with three, and then you multiply that by three. So in other words, you take a number, multiply it by three, right? And this is tripling a number. In this case, you get nine. But if you want to go back, what do you do? Well, you take one-third of nine. One-third and tripling are opposites. So you take nine and you divide it by three, right? So there's this idea that um, to find a third of something, you divide by three, anything. So if we have three to the sixth and you want to find a third of it, you divide by three, which would equal three to the sixth over three to the first, which equals, well, three times three times three, six times and over one three well you can pair oop, pen tool's a little messed up there sorry if you pair up um right these two threes right here three over three is one so it's almost like you subtract these out they're not going to impact your answer and what's left is five threes or three to the fifth our answer but here well kind of what's happening if you think about it we have three and then we have three squared three to the third and Oh boy, let me fix that. Okay, three to the third. Well, you know, let me, let me start this over. Okay, I just want to show you this pattern here so you understand intuitively what is happening. If you take a number like three, and then three squared, and then three to the third. Ugh, I need to fix this pen. Okay, sorry. Three to the third, and three to the fourth, and three to the fifth. What's going to happen is every time you raise the power by one, you're tripling your result again and again, right? That's three to the third, three to the fourth has four threes, and oops, three to the fifth has three has five threes. Now the idea is that if you look at this, we're multiplying by one more three each time, and this tells you that if you want to take a third of a number, you just take one of the threes away. So this is logic that, working backwards, oh, and we look, I'm sorry, looking at 3 to the 6th. 3 to the 6th has, right, 6 threes, 3 times, 3 times, 3, 6 times, 5, 6, okay. So every time you want to take a third of a number, you just take one power of 3 away. So 5, if you're taking a ninth of a number, you take two powers of 3 away, and so forth. This intuition can really help you solve tougher problems that when you increase something by one, by, by a power of one, you are increasing it by the base times. So, so what I'm saying is if you have three squared, that's nine, right? Well, three to the third is not just one larger, it's three times larger, it's 27. That's because this exponent tells you, since it's one higher, you have one more right factor that is the base. You're multiplying by that base again and again and again. So if you had a number like 4 squared and you were told, that, well, now you have 4 to the third, what's going to happen? Well, you go from 16, 4 squared is 64, 4 to the third. Since you raise the exponent by 1, you raise the power by the base, right? You're multiplied by that base. It would be 4 times larger in this case, right? So that's because the base is 4. So always look at that base. And don't forget that when the exponent increases, you're, you're adding in more factors. You're adding in more um, the base multiple times. You're multiplying it over and over and over again. And I hope I didn't say adding and multiplying in the wrong way. Let me say it one more time. When you increase the exponent, you're multiplying by the base again and again and again. So you're increasing... <laughs> when you increase the base, the exponent by a certain amount, that's, that's how many more times, that's it. That's how many more times you multiply by the base. All right, thanks.